all right so let's get started hello everyone welcome to our youtube channel that is upsc gig by nrg today in this ethics and human interface that is chapter first of ethics gs paper number four we are going to start with lecture number seven all right in the previous lecture just to take you through the voyage we have already started with the determinant of ethics in human interface right and uh, as we have already seen what is the or what are the determinants we have basically seen the five determinants or the grounds or the basis which decides the rightness or wrongness of an action right so what are the five grounds which we have seen as a determinant so first was the sources right sources the second was the result or consequence consequence and results the third was basically the motive and intentions right motive and intentions the fourth was basically the matter of an action matter of an action which will basically compromise a uh, comprise of uh, means and ends okay and the fifth one is the basically circumstances in which that particular action has been performed right so this all five grounds are considered as determinants which basically decide the rightness or wrongness of an action and there is basically a one one universal determinant which is basically a conscious human action right so each and every action will come under the purview of ethical or unethical if that particular action is consciously performed right conscious human action so this is a universal determinant right so as it is universal we all tend to accept this idea and other than this uh, universal determinants the five are the important determinants on the basis of which we decide the rightness or wrongness of an action so in the previous lecture that is this lecture we have already done with the sources where we have seen the sources are basically comprised of two types that is internal and external sources right internal sources were basically comprised of conscience reason and etc and external sources were basically law the moral code in society and etc right and in this all particular external sources we have already seen in lecture number uh, four i guess and if you guys haven't watched that go and have a look of this particular lecture right so in previous lecture we have started with the determinants of ethics we have done this very important upsc annual report as a case study where we have seen how an allegation in a particular uh, on a particular uh, serving officer or member of service has been um, has been scrutinized and the charges were called off on the basis that his intent was good for trying to find a way in a legal manner for supporting the good cause and his the allegation the respective allegation was siphoned off right in his case so this very important case studies we have seen then uh, we have started with the source right and as we have already dealt with the external source in the previous lecture that is law versus ethics law what law versus ethics values versus ethics and etc in this in the previous lecture we have seen the internal source right where we have mainly dealt with the conscience which is being one of the most important faculty which judges the rightness or wrongness of an action right then we have seen certain uh, particular conditions where the help of conscience in bureaucracy can be taken right and where we have seen the five particular uh, or important factors like when there is an absence of law or when there is no or uh, statute has which was uh, made in particular circumstances then a bureaucrat or a serving officer can take the help of conscience then we we had seen the time of crisis right where the results become more important and hence there is no code or or rule to be followed there a bureaucrat can take a help of the conscience in order to promote welfare in the society then we have seen uh, the second determinant which was consequentialism or teleological theory which basically 
uh, establish the idea that the rightness and wrongness of an action is decided on the basis of result right and the under principle or under cause of this particular teleology theory is nothing but uh, hedonism and we have seen the propounder of hedonism like bentham and uh, mill and etc right who were propounding the idea of utilitarianism that is greatest happiness of the greatest number then we have seen the types of hedonism that was basically egoistic hedonism and altruistic hedonism then we have seen can a result be a source of moral ethics can a consequence or teleological process can be a source of a moral ethics where we have come to the conclusion that yes it can be sourced but there are always an exception right uh, and we have seen certain situations like right like uh, sometimes the action can be good but result might be bad we have seen the example of a medical officer right then we have seen uh, one of the most important uh, legend that is bhagavad gita's concept of nishkam karma yoga where lord sri krishna says that be a karma yogi right and this do justice to whatever consequentialist propounded the idea of what the consequence where bhagavad gita gives very contrast what contrast uh, theory of nishkam karma yoga that one should never be attached to what in the result right then we have basically we have seen a question right we have seen a question which uh, basically we have practiced a question which was all human beings aspire for happiness do you agree what does happiness means to you we have done these questions in very depth and clarity and if you guys haven't watched the previous lecture i i highly and uh, sincerely recommend you all to go and have a watch of the previous lecture because it will help you develop the conceptual clarity in very crystal clear manner and it will also solidify your pedestal to build the future concepts right so let's get started with today's lecture but before this let's see these questions and let's check whether you guys are attentively attending the lecture or not right so consider the following factors in making ethical judgments right so what are the factors or grounds we take into consideration while making a ethical judgment so option a is the motive from which the action springs the nature of the act itself including the means and the resulting consequences right so these are some of the factors uh, whether we take into consideration or not you guys have to answer that in the comment section i will check it and also respond to you okay so try answering this question in the comment section take a pause think about it then respond in the comment section okay so let's get started so now let's see the third important determinant which is a matter of an action right so what is a matter of an action so any action is basically constitutes of two important essence that is means and an ends right if you follow a particular means a particular end will be a result right so these are the two important matter of an action right as we all know that so the there is two school when it comes to means and ends right so in this slides as we can already seen the first school which propounds the idea about purity of means purity of means right and the second and the second school basically says or propounds the idea of and justifying the means right and justifying the means what does this particular terms mean we will see in detail but just have an idea here that purity of means basically propounds the idea of that means should be pure right means should be pure and it basically says whatever irrespective of means one should always focus on end if end is good it will justify the means this is the basic idea now let's see each of them in detail right so let's get started with first that is end justifying the means what does this particular school propounds that end justifies the means right so the basic idea behind this school is that if end is well everything is well in hindi we might have heard about a most famous adag which says that ant bhala ant bhala ant bhala to sab bhala right ant bhala to sab bhala if ant 
if and or the end is good whatever means you have adopted or acquired in order to reach to that particular and or end it is also be justified if end is well everything is well this is the idea which says that end justifies the means right so who who are the main advocate or propounder of this particular school basically karl marx karl marx and nicolo machiavelli we will do uh, this thinkers in detail when we will be doing the later chapter on uh, moral thinkers and philosophers right so these are the two important propounders who propound the idea that end justifies the means right so here is the very famous idea of marx which says that there is no birth without blood right as we all know that during delivery or during birth there is a blood right there is a blood and hence he is kind of symbolizing the idea of blood with what a revolution revolution a violent revolution a violent revolution right so in his in his philosophy he propounds the idea that one has to reach to the end by acquiring any means by acquiring any means which can even be violent right which can even be violent and hence irrespective of being concerned about the means one should always focus on the end and hence they give less emphasis on means and they give more emphasis on what ends they give more emphasis on the ends or the results results and less emphasis on whatever steps one followed in order to reach this particular results right so what is the means what is the means means are basically the procedure procedure or steps or steps one followed in order to reach to certain result right so this is basically a means so they the end justifies means schoolist or theorist they basically propounds that idea the idea that one should always focus on result right if result is good irrespective of procedure or steps you have followed to to reach to this particular result will be justified right so sometimes what happens what is the result of this particular school sometimes what happens we engage we engage in wrong activities right we engage in wrong activities wrong activities for the sake of for the sake of name fame wealth etc right and hence they say that if you successfully get name fame wealth respect in the society whatever is the means whatever the means or steps you have taken to reach to this particular uh, particular aspects that is name fame wealth and respect will be justified right if you have name fame wealth respect in the society it is justified in a way whichever you have followed in order to reach here because nobody cares about the means if end is good then everything is a good even machiavelli very famously said that nicolo machiavelli Nic nicolo machiavelli he is very a uh, prominent thinker and he is also one of the very great propounder of realism political realism right when we will be doing our lecture on international uh, relations his name will surface a lot when it comes to political realism because he is the very profound thinker when it comes to political realism which is the sole principle behind international relation in today's world so nicolo machiavelli advises to the prince his magnum opus is basically the prince right his book is the prince where he advises the prince where he advises the prince certain principles in order to be a good ruler right so here he says that the prince should always be concerned his prince should always be concerned about the ends because end justifies the means and just ends justifies the and justifies the means right 
so this particular statement that is and justifies the means is a brain child of niccolo machiavelli and hence he can be a he can be considered as or given a veneration that he is a flag bearer of what and justifies the means school right so this is the idea behind the first school which which says that and justifies the means right so which is the second school so the second school is basically the which like basically emphasize idea about the purity of means they basically talk that both purity and ends should be taken into consideration why they should be taken into the consideration because they are inseparable they are complementary and both are convertible right what does this particular idea means so here as per gandhi ji as per gandhi ji so the very important thinker or flag bearer of purity of means school is basically mahatma gandhi in indian context mahatma gandhi in indian context right so he basically correlates means with ends right so in the previous school that is end justifies means we have seen that means are means and ends are not correlated or correlated right if ends is good then it will justify the means whichever is adopted in order to reach to a particular end right but here comes a very different and very distinct school which was propounded by basically mahatma gandhi which says that means and ends are inseparable they are complementary to each other and both are convertible convertible what does this mean first is inseparable what does this mean he says that both means and ends cannot be separated right he basically correlated means with a seed right and ends with a plant right and he propounded a very profound statement which says that one cannot one cannot expect a rose plant a rose plant by planting a babul seed a babul seed right so what does this symbolizes what does this symbolizes one cannot expect expect a rose plant a rose plant by planting a babul seed right so what does this babul symbolizes here it is basically a negative means a negative means right it is basically a thronji type so it is basically denoting a negative means and what is rose rose is a positive or good end right so he is basically saying that one cannot expect a good result that is rose plant by acquiring or by planting a negative seed that is negative means that was babul seed right so that is how he related the idea of means and ends to the seed and plant one cannot expect good plant by sowing a bad seed right that is why he said the idea that both means and ends are correlated they are complementary if you acquire a good means if you acquire a good means the end will also be good right because they are complementary and they both are convertible right what does this particular term convertible means if you con convert a means right if you if you are convert your a uh, procedure of action then your end or your result will also be what molded right so that is why it is famously said that focus on your focus on the procedure or steps right if you focus on steps and uh, procedure the results can be taken care of the results will be taken care of taken care of this is the idea which symbolizes or which signifies the importance of purity of means of gandhi ji right keep taking a note side by side because these are the most profound examples and tidbits that can be quoted in the exam to add value into your answer right so in this through this idea one of the very pertinent example that comes to my mind when we talk about means and ends of gandhi ji is non cooperation movement right non cooperation movement what was the means that 
that was the resultant uh, or that was the a uh, cause of ncm it was basically the chora chori incident right chora chori incident which was kind of broken in order to give effect to non cooperation movement and what was the result the result or the end by gandhi ji he basically nullified or he basically cancelled the non cooperation movement why because the means the means to give effect to the end of non cooperation movement was corrupted it was violent it was what it was violent they have fired a entire uh, thana or police station right so this was the means it was kind of violent in nature that's why gandhi ji had to call off the non cooperation movement right and hence here we can see here we can see what here we can see consistency we can see consistency consistency in integrity in integrity thoughts and actions and actions in gandhi ji in gandhi ji's and that is why gandhi ji becomes one of the epitome gandhi ji becomes one of the epitome of what purity of means right purity of means right that is how this is how you see or look into the concept this is how you analyze the concept holistically comprehensively and in 360 degree so as to understand any concept with great greater understanding and clarity right so what is the basic idea of purity of means if means is corrupt that is chora chori movement the end shall always be corrupt right the end shall always be corrupt and that is why gandhi ji had to call off the non cooperation movement right so this is the school which propounds the idea of purity of means in international a uh, realm we also talk about the categorical the concept of categorical imperative of categorical imperative imperative of immanuel kant immanuel kant right categorical imperative what does this particular term categorical imperative means it also signifies a same idea of gandhi ji that means should always means should always be given more importance right more importance and he talked or he taken into the consideration of man when propounding the idea of categorical imperative and one of the most important idea of immanuel kant a categorical imperative is that man man out to be treated man out to be treated as an end as an end in itself and not not as an not as a means to an end as a means to an to an end right why because of human dignity because of human dignity and respect right which becomes categorical imperative for immanuel kant and that is why he says that men ought to be treated as an end in itself and not as a means this is a, a example a epitome from international realm of categorical imperative by immanuel kant which is a tantamount or similar to the idea of purity of means of gandhi ji in indian context right so this was all about the two of uh, factors when we talks about the matter of an accents right what were the two factors can you guys recollect it leave in a comment right 
try commenting about the two means just to give you a basic summary the first was basically and justifies and justifies the means and the second one was the second one was uh, the second one is purity of means right so this uh, this school basically emphasize upon the ends that is results and the second one they basically focus on the means to get a good result right so this was the basic idea behind the idea of what matter of an action that is one of the important determinant of what the ethical action right so now let's see the four determinant that is intention or purpose of an action right what is intention so according to aristotle in his nicomachean ethics right in his uh, nicomachean ethics basically uh, he propounded the idea that every human action right every human action no matter how trivial how trivial that particular action is has some purpose till you or motive behind it right so whatever we do whatever action human beings perform there is some till you there is some till you motive or purpose behind it purpose behind it right so a person has a moral responsibility for all such actions why because he has certain motives or intentions behind doing such action no action is without motive or intention if such is a case then that particular action will become unconscious human action right if any action is without intention or motive right then that becomes unconscious human action and that will not be judged under the purview of ethics right because the human has not conducted that particular action under the will right he has not willed that particular effect and hence in normal human cases in normal human situation and circumstances every action has a will every action has a telio purpose intention right to effect that particular action right this is what aristotle in his nicomachean ethics says for a human action to be morally good the agent or doer must have good action right so it becomes very paramount for the uh, a paramount determinant to decide whether any action is good or bad right for a human act to be morally good for a human action to be morally good right the intention the intention of doer must be must be must be good right and here every action every action and intention is kind of having a correlation correlation why why correlation because we cannot see the intention of the individual we can see indiv uh, intention of the individual through the through the result or consequence of the action right if the action was good then we can say that intention was good but if action was not good then we cannot we cannot confirmly say his action his intention was not good sometimes even good intention can lead to bad result and sometimes even bad in bad intentions can lead to good results right or good action right so here intention can just be a uh, taken into consideration taken into consideration taken as a consideration to decide the what ethic ethic uh, rightness or wrongness of an action right so this is how uh, intentions uh, intentions is taken into consideration behind the groundness to judge the rightness or wrongness of an action right so this was the four determinant right there are several examples several examples which can be written here right that if you are helping a individual cross a if you helping a blind person cross a road right cross a road 
let's say if you are helping a blind person cross a road but what happens there is a truck which comes and hit both of you both of you the helper the helper did not die the helper did not die but the blind person who who was helped was died in the incident right who was died in the incident incident here the helper will not be or the action of helper or intention of helper cannot be questioned why because his intention was right his intention was good to help this blind person cross the street right but here the trucks come and he and the truck hit the people right and the blind person dies right and here the intention of the individual cannot be questioned right so here the intentions play a important role in determining the rightful or wrongful action of an individual right so despite having a bad result the intention of the helper was good to help the blind person pass the road or cross the road right and despite the ramification that was the death of the blind individual the action of the helper will be considered as ethical and the truck driver shall be punished under the legal code of the country right so this is what was the fourth determinant that was intention and here comes the fifth determinant that is what circumstances right here the fifth determinant is circumstances so what are circumstances so as we all know that every human action every human action every human action is performed is performed under circumstances under circumstances or particular situation right particular situation so circumstances may therefore affect the morality of an action and add value to the moral quality right and hence your circumstances and uh, uh, situation decides the what morality morality of an action of an action right and what are the factors to be taken into consideration about when and where when and where the particular act has been committed right when and where how when whether it is done during a war or peace like what are the uh, consideration that we take into uh, consideration the first is when what will when compromise uh, comprised of it will basically comprised of when that is either it was during peace or war whether it is during the normal situation or it is during what unusual unusual situations like war right so this will determine the morality or rightness or wrongness of an action as it is very famously said that everything everything is fair in love and war in love and war why we say this because here these circumstances of uh, of love and war is basically deciding the morality of an action right and this is why we take into consideration the circumstances in determining the what morality or rightness or wrongness of an actions right so what can be the example right so here let's say take a example take a example of an intelligent of an intelligent officer officer right who is captured who is captured by what a warring country warring country warring country and he discloses he discloses he discloses the important national information right national information and hence his action of disclosing the important and secret national information to enemy country shall not be considered 
as unethical why because the situation or circumstances was not apt or right he was under pressure he was under pressure he was under threat he was under threat right and he was being pressurized to do so and hence under certain situation he has or under certain circumstances he has disclosed certain important national information which cannot be considered or brought under the purview of ethics right so this is how the circumstances takes into consideration while determining what while determining uh, world while determining uh, the morality or grounds of an rightness or wrongness of an action and where where how does where decides the morality of an action let's say someone is committing someone is committing a committing a sacrilege right a sacrilege or religious or religious immorality immorality in in holy places in holy places right like temples like church etc right this will influence the morality or rightness or wrongness of an action right doing immoral things in religious places right it will determine it will determine a what the rightness of a reaction rightness or wrongness of an action let's say one commits murder in the temple right so this will kind of aggravate the situation and hence his action shall be considered as immoral this is how the fifth determinant that is circumstances comes into play right so hence how how to conclude the determinants of ethics so hence on the basis of hence on the basis of on the basis of law right on the basis of law results motives intentions circumstances circumstances and matter of an action matter of an of an action that is means and ends the morality the morality or rightness or wrongness of an action is decided right is decided and not only morality but also the rewards and punishments and punishments are decided are decided accordingly accordingly right so this is how we how we conclude the the important aspect of ethics that is determinants the determinants of ethics right so what are the five determinants the five determinants are law results motive intentions circumstances and matter of an action these are the determinants of what the ethics what are the determinants these are the grounds or the basis upon which we decide the morality or rightness or wrongness of an action all right so we are done with the determinants of ethics in this lecture right we are done successfully done with the determinants of ethics and uh, in next in next lecture we will shall be starting with the very important concept that is consequence of ethical action in the society right consequence of ethical action in the society ethical action in the society and we will also do a practice question practice questions right so as to check your progress right so ensure to answer the question which was asked in the mcq and try commenting in the section and with this we are ending to this lecture so remember the motto statement of upsc geek by anarchy that is as you 
as you strive so you thrive so you thrive ab jitni mehnat karenge utni aapko safalta milegi and let's end today's lecture on a very positive note people because prelims is fast approaching and uh, ensure to strive each day to have a better and fruitful what future uh, and uh, with this let's end today's lecture thank you so much for attending patiently and also all the very best